Audio Sync. Welcome back to Drunk Wait. I, 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 can't, I can't say rankings. I'm already too drunk for this. Welcome back to Drunk Rankings, the show where I drunk tweet some movies over at at Matt underscore presents, and then I come on camera and I rank all of them. Uh, I looked at the Wrong Turn franchise, so uh, we will be ranking those films today. I have a bottle of wine again, but uh, it feels a little wrong <laughs> to be like sipping wine while you're talking about something like the Wrong Turn franchise, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna crack open a cold one first. We're, we're gonna start with a beer. Good old redneck shit right there. It's, it's it's even it's Dallas Blonde. This is Texas beer right here. Dallas Blondes are so good, man. Deep Ellum, love them. Not the best Texas beer. The best Texas beer is Revolver Blood and Honey. If you're in Texas, get a Blood and Honey. Uh, so much like last time, I'm using natural light for this. Uh, but last time, the sun kind of went down while I was talking. Granted, it was still pretty light out by the time I was done. Just, you know, the sun sets on that side of my apartment, so nothing was coming in through the window anymore. Uh, but I kind of liked that effect. <laughs> like, I start out very clear, but then, like, the drunker I get, the harder it is to see me. Uh, that said, to counter this, I have set up a light. I have my lights up this time, just in case we lose the natural light. But, uh, right now we're, we're going for some natural light. The Wrong Turn series is a franchise of films that started in... Actually, I think the mid-2000s. When did the first one come? Okay, 2003 was when the first one came out. But it was, it was 2007 before they made another. That's four years. Um, it's, it's a franchise that started in the, the 2000s and has run all the way up to the current day. There was one last year, granted after a pretty extensive hiatus, but, uh, you know, it, it, there was one last year and I, I think we may see more wrong turn movies, uh, to come more in the future. The, the central antagonists of this series, a, a family of inbred cannibals, and here are all of their stories ranked. Starting with the last place movie. I knew I should have taken that left point at this moins. Yeah, I, I've put the remake in last place, but honestly, not by much, and... It, it almost even feels unfair. Like, I, I, I almost feel bad putting this one in last place. Because, like, this, this is not like a Leprechaun Origins thing where the remake is so horrendously worse than the rest of the series. It's just, like, not a very good horror movie. But, I mean, there's stuff in here. There's, like, little bits and pieces of this movie that I think are better than anything in the rest of the Wrong Turn series. But it's drowned out by these, like, long swaths that are just such a miserable slog to get through. This movie is so boring at points, and so, honestly, kind of obnoxious at points. I don't really like any of these characters. Even the main character, it, it feels like they do a heel turn on the main character, like, partway through. Like, she goes from this obnoxious, like, yuppie teenager to, to a badass out of nowhere. Uh, and she's, she's real obnoxious in the front half of the movie, as are the rest of these characters. It's just not a fun movie, and, and... Even the worst installments in the mainline franchise, I can say, like, there are fun moments in them. I, I fail to think of, like, a fun moment in this movie. There are, like, some good moments, but I fail to think of anything fun about it. Now, th this movie starts off with, like, a dad coming out to this, like, rural community looking for his daughter who's, who's disappeared and that almost seems like a good setup for a wrong turn but like some guy coming in after the fact and 
trying to piece together what has happened. And, and, like, when he has the spotlight, when the movie's about him, it's really good. Honestly, they needed to, like, really trim down all the stuff with the teenagers. The stuff with the teenagers is the part that just, just fucking kills this movie. It's no good. It is no good. And this movie, this movie is an hour and 50 minutes. I saw that on the time bar, and I'm like, holy shit. Why would you make a wrong turn movie an hour 50? Honestly, if this movie were like 20 minutes shorter, it probably would not be last place. It, it, it just, it doesn't feel like a wrong turn movie, you know what I mean? Like, they, they've replaced the inbred cannibals with this random mountain cult called the Foundation, which kind of resembles, like... In, in 6, the previous movie to this, in part 6, they have, like, this whole village of, of the cannibal inbreds living out in the woods. And so it almost seems like they're, like, following up on that. Like, this is supposed to be that village and we're gonna dedicate more time. But no, it's like a completely... Di the inbreds aren't in this one at all. And beyond that, like, Wrong Turn is such a a tasteless franchise, it's such a, like, like it, it really leans in on being, like, exploitative, being, like, gross and violent and overly sexual and all of that good stuff, and this film does not feel tasteless at all, it feels like a very generic horror film, it feels like any other horror film coming out today is gonna be just like this. This might as well be, like, any other horror movie coming out today, and, like, one of the unnoteworthy ones, one of the ones that doesn't get a bunch of critical praise, just, like, a complete... I mean, that's what happened. That's what it is. It's just, like, a forgettable, disposable horror movie from the 2020s. I'm already losing the light. I'm, I'm already starting to get too dark. And I started filming this way earlier. It's November. We just had time change. Time change is some bullshit. It should go the other direction. I should have more light at the end of the day, not less. How is this saving daylight? I have less daylight. This is less daylight savings time. There's a gay couple in this movie. And the, the, there, was a, there was a gay lady in... There, there, there was a lesbian in Wrong Turn 2, and there's a gay couple in this movie. There was also a lesbian couple in Wrong Turn 4. And I think it kind of shows, like, three... It shows that these three movies were filmed in three separate decades. Because Wrong Turn 2 is from the 2000s, and the gay representation there feels very... exploitative, very... I don't know, problematic, kind of. It's like, oh, we, we got a lesbian in our, like, weird fucked up movie. Ah, isn't it, like, weird and fucked up? Uh, and then, like, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have Wrong Turn 2021, where it's like, this gay couple feels like complete pandering. It feels like a like two characters who show up in every horror movie that gets made nowadays. Uh, and it feels especially rude that one of them is the first to die. So, uh, Wrong Turn 4 really hit a sweet spot. The 2010s were really the time to, like, like, it's a time where people are more accepting of the gays, so, you know, you get politer depictions of gay people, but they're not, like, completely bland it's, it's it's not something that they're doing in every horror movie so it does still kind of feel like you're you're going out on a limb there now i did not like wrong turn four wrong turn four is decidedly one of the bad ones but it does have the best gay representation of the series this is too far one direction and wrong turn two is the, too far the other uh wrong turn four really hits the sweet spot uh, visually, it's probably the best-looking film, but that really does not save it at all. Uh, I'm gonna turn the light on, and then I'm gonna move on to the next film. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. Wrong turn six. Uh, uh, this one gets ranked lower than four 
but it's, again, like many of these drunk rankings, it's a situation where, like, one tiny little thing is what has led to one being ranked higher than the other, because ultimately, these are both films with, like... They're, they're equal in quality. They, they are both equally bad films. And it's only some, like, little tiny thing that has led me to choose one over the other. You could certainly say Wrong Turn is not a particularly intelligent series. This is a very low-brow franchise. But I, I would hesitate to call any of the installments prior to six stupid there's nothing particularly stupid about the other movies six gets stupid this is a stupid movie they kill a man by sticking a fire hose in his ass and then filling him up with water until he explodes this is a stupid movie it also carries on the trend from five of having non-fucked up members of the the inbred family which uh they're not that interesting like it's really easy to tell where <laughs> which characters are gonna end up being part of the inbred family and which ones aren't uh at least in the last one they brought in fucking doug bradley to be their like normal looking inbred uh, I, I mean, like, when I say this movie is stupid, it extends to, like, everything. Like, it's it, the main plot is, like, this kid has inherited this big ol' ho hotel, apparently, but he, he was, like, an orphan, so he never knew, like, his biological family, and he, he's coming out here to, like, get some hint of who his biological family was. Can you guess where it's going? Can you guess where they're going with that plot? He's one of the inbreds. He's one of the inbreds. Oh, oh, I couldn't predict that. And he has such a heel turn on the inbred family. Um, granted, they kind of suggest that it's like, oh, like, like, this is just in our blood. This is who our people are. And so, like, he gets a little taste of it, and now he's, now he's all in on the inbred family. But... I, I don't know, man. It just seems kind of stupid to all of a sudden have him like, Oh, uh, I, I, I love these inbreds. I, I, this is my family. This is my blood. I am with them forever. Honestly, none of that is really why this is ranked lower than four. The reason this is ranked lower than four is... Uh, more or less entirely comes down to the pacing. The pacing of this movie is so slow, which is not something I can say about the other Wrong Turn movies. I, I have said very publicly before that I hate it when horror movies... They'll have, like, one or two kills at the very beginning, and then they want to hold out till the third act. They want to have all of their kills in the third act. So they can all be like big climactic kills. But that fucking sucks. That's bad pacing. You should have kills frequently throughout your slasher movie. Especially if you're making a wrong turn film. A franchise that at this point pretty much only exists to do like wild over the top kills. It's like yeah, we're, we're here for the kills. Pace them out well. Put one every, like, 10, 15 minutes. Otherwise, it's, it gets boring. It's 50 minutes into the film before any of the main cast gets killed. It's boring through a lot of it, and then when it stops being boring, it gets really fucking stupid. Uh, so that is why... This is taking the lowest ranking out of the entire mainline franchise. I, I am counting Wrong Turn 2021 as a reboot and not a sequel. Um, it, it was sort of ambiguous going in. I'm like, I don't know if this is a sequel or a remake. Like, one of those sequels that just obnoxiously, I might add, uses the title of the original. But no. But no, I'm willing to call Wrong Turn 2021 
a reboot rather than a, a, a sequel, largely on the basis that uh, it it's not about the inbreds at all. It goes it's it's a completely different story. So yeah, that was, that one's a remake, um, not a sequel. Not that it couldn't be in continuity with the others. I'm just not counting it as part of the mainline franchise. Um, in terms of things this film has going for it, it does have the best joke of the franchise. Of all sorts stay here, including three presidents, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, and Jefferson Davis. Not one had a complaint. Jefferson Davis. It's but uh, one joke does not a good film make, so... Yeah, not super into this one. I, I mean... To be fair, it is, it is kind of where you expect a wrong turn six to go. Because at this point, like, this is such a wild, tasteless... I don't even know what word I'm looking for here. It's such an insane franchise that, like... Yeah, of course part six was going to end up like this. Like, what else? what else could they do? What else could they do? This is just what Wrong Turn is. But... It's kind of not very good. I knew I should have taken that left point of Albuquerque. Wrong Turn 4. So, going into Wrong Turn 4, I, I thought this was going to be a, a prequel movie? Because it's called, like, like, uh, like, Bloody Beginnings? And... The f the opening scene is a uh, it's a flashback. After that, you no, know, it takes place after the other movies. And honestly, after the opening, like the opening scene is like honestly kind of fun. It's really good. It's like you know the the inbreds are trapped at this asylum, and of course, of course, they end up opening the cages. And all of the inmates get out, and they're running around the, the asylum, uh, fucking killing people, set to some classical music, naturally. And I'm, I was watching that, and I'm like, this is a fun sequence, but also it feels like they're blowing their load really early with this one. And I was right! They did blow their load really early with this one, because after that scene, the movie's just boring. It's, it's such a, like, generic slasher film, like, com it, it is it is beat for beat what you expect out of a slasher film. This could have been part of any fucking franchise. It didn't need to be a wrong turn movie. Like, something I will give the wrong turn franchise credit for is... It, it's a very original series. It's, it's not repetitive at all. Every movie, something new is happening. Part one, it's, it's like this guy is being chased by some cannibals. And then, you know, in part two, they're filming a reality TV show. And then part three, it's these prisoners whose buses crashed. And then, you know, five, there's like a music festival and they're trying to break Doug Bradley out of jail. Six, uh, it's like this whole, like, converting this guy to be part of their uh, tribe of uh, inbreds. And then even the remake, I'm kind of okay with it being about this, like, random other group of people because it's like... Yeah, I mean, the Wrong Turn franchise has always done, like, weird stuff. And that's why I was so excited to see, like, the dad trying to piece together the story after the fact. Because it's like, hey, that's a unique idea. That's something Wrong Turn would do. Because they're, like, so many of these movies are, like, unique ideas. It's not the same story over and over. It's something new in every single movie. And 4 is just such a generic slasher film. Like, the thing they did to set it apart is, like, it's during a snowstorm now. Whoop-dee-doo. It's, it's cold outside. This is the winter wrong turn. The wrong turn Christmas special. You can also tell what era of horror this came out in. Because it's the first film in the franchise to substantively utilized jump scares. So it's like, oh, okay, so this is like post 
paranormal activities around the time we're getting like the conjuring movies you know this this is the era of horror where they just cram as many jump scares in as they fucking can god i don't miss it god i do not miss 2010s horror the 2010s uh, uh okay early 2010s by like 2015 2015 2016 that's about when like the switch to good horror happens that's when horror movies were finally allowed to be good again early 2010s even like late 2000s it's a whole lot of fucking jump scares and my god am i not into it i i was talking about this with my friends very recently they they we, we were talking about our opinions on jump scares and there's a quote i don't remember who i think it's i think it was something like one of my friends said but he might have been quoting someone else but uh, he, he said, like, jump scares are the horror movie equivalent of a fart joke, right? He, like, there's a way to do it right. There are good jump scares and there are good fart jokes. But more often than not, it's a really lazy way to get a reaction from the audience. Uh, other things about this movie. The ending is kind of... The, the, okay, so like the final lines of dialogue are so extremely awkward. Yes, it worked. Good job. Let's get the hell out of here. But then, like. You know, they're driving off and you're like, okay, well, at least those two escape. And then it's like, haha, twist! The, the, the inbred still got them! And it's like, okay, like, that was kind of an interesting note to go out on. If you ignore that, those really awkward lines right before it happens. But yeah, ultimately, this is like... Absolutely. Uh, apart from that opening scene where we learn a more, like, the tiniest bit more about the inbred's past. No, this is, uh, this is a run-of-the-mill horror, or a run-of-the-mill slasher film. You, you've seen movies exactly like this. There's no reason to watch this one. Oh, I get it. I should have twinned left at Albuquerque. Wrong Turn 3 is the story of a bus full of prisoners, two overt guards, and one undercover cop. Uh, their bus crashes in the woods, and they're being stalked by uh, the, the inbreds, who are killing them off one by one. And it is so... So very obvious which direction this movie is going that I pulled out a note on my phone and wrote down the order I thought these characters were going to die in. And I got one wrong. I, I had like an 80% batting average on that one. I got it dead on. I the, the one that threw me off was they introduced this like undercover cop. Who's, who's going in dressed like a prisoner, and I'm like, okay, the undercover cop's gonna survive, and this, like, main cop they've got is gonna die pretty early on. Instead, the undercover cop dies pretty early on, and it's the main cop who, who survives to the end, and I'm kind of like, why did you even bother introducing the undercover? Like, he might as well have not been- there was no reason for him to be undercover. Like, plot-wise, this movie would be pretty much exactly the same if he was not an undercover cop. So, that threw me off, like, the tiniest bit. Otherwise, I predicted the order these characters were gonna die in with extreme clarity. It's like, oh yeah, this is- this is exactly the order these characters are dying in. I, I, I don't even have to watch the rest of the movie to know that. And I was right. I was absolutely right about that. Uh, th this is like... I would ha it would be hard for me to call any of the Wrong Turn movies good or bad, but there are certainly the better ones and the worse ones, and this is kind of the line between the two, right? Like, from here, it's, like, the better ones, and from and on the other side, it's, like, all of these are kind of not 
that great. So uh, this one, you know, I, I mean, we're we're at like the middle of the list now. So yeah, this is this is the line that divides the better movies from the worst movies. Uh, I would say it leans to the better ones, but it is certainly the worst of the better ones. But it does engage in the good old exploitation pastime of boob mutilation. Gotta love it. Uh, you know, I just bet we should have turned left at Albuquerque. Man, it, it really took me half the video to finish a beer. God damn. I'm slipping in this one. Wrong Turn 5 is a Halloween movie, which is cool because it's actually the one I watched right before Halloween, so that was, that was good timing on that one. In this one, there's some big, like, indie music festival that's supposed to be, like, you know, the, the more obscure, like, Burning Man, you know, where everyone comes out and they dress up like the mountain cannibals. I guess people just know the mountain cannibals, the, the mountain inbreds exist. Now, honestly, it, <laughs> it reminds me of, like, Scream 2, where they're all going to see the movie based on the, the in that universe, real life ghost face killer and everyone's dressing up like ghost face. It's like, well, that feels kind of tacky. That feels kind of tasteless. That kind of feels like me showing up to a film about the Zodiac killer dressed as the Zodiac killer. All right, writing assignment. I think the Zodiac Killer kills because blank. Uh, so, y you know, you got a bunch of kids dressed up as, like, th these fucked up mountain inbreds. So naturally, that leads to some scenes where, like, oh, this lady is dealing with the real inbreds, but she doesn't realize it. Oh, ha, 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 ha. In this film, Doug Bradley, uh, famous for playing Pinhead in Hellraiser, uh, shows up, he, he gets arrested, partially because he was trying to kill these kids, like, the police catch him, like, trying to kill these kids, and, uh, so the, the inbreds are coming to get him, because apparently he's a part of the inbred family, they, they never elaborate on who he is to the inbreds, he's just one of their own, but he, he just looks like normal Doug Bradley. And it's like, what, why, why even bother? Like, Doug Bradley's most iconic role is him in heavy makeup. Like, literally, he was in such heavy makeup in Hellraiser that he showed up to the rap party, and he, he was, like, trying to talk to people, and they're like, who are you? Did, have we worked together? And he's like, I was Pinhead! I was, the, like, the main character of the movie! We've been working together for months! <laughs> so, like, just put him in some makeup. Like, it's not like anyone's gonna recognize him as Pinhead anyway. I mean, I did, but that's just because I know what Doug Bradley looks like. Also, I, I knew he was in this one before going into it, so... His presence in the film is pretty weird, but... It's still, like, an entertaining film. It's still, like, a very interesting, like direction for the franchise to go it's it, you know it's very much like wrong turn does assault on precinct 13 although they don't shoot any kids which is weird if ever there was a franchise that could use a little bit of infanticide it's the wrong turn franchise they need to kill some kids in these movies also like at <laughs> At this point in the franchise, it, it seems like the inbreds are going out of their way to kill people in unique ways. It's like, yeah, we can't just, like, shoot them with arrows or hit them with an axe anymore. They, like, they fucking bury a dude on a, on, in, a in a soccer field and run him over with a lawnmower. <laughs> In a scene that feels very reminiscent of Caligula, of all things. Uh, but it's like, wow, you guys put a lot of effort into killing this dude. In a creative way, but... I don't know, like, it, that doesn't seem like 
wildly out of character for them. I am I am on board with them killing people in like fun but impractical ways. <laughs> hey y'all, editor Matt here. Um so Filmic Pro has this very bad habit of when I'm recording, just all of a sudden getting really pixely. Um and usually it's for like 10, 20 seconds. But it did it for, like, 20 minutes in this video. Like, so much of the back part of this video is just extremely pixelated. And and this is a series that I do, like, live, unscripted, so it's not like I can just go back and reshoot this. So, uh, I apologize for how pixelated uh, the image gets right here. Luckily, or unluckily, I, I haven't figured it out yet, Filmic Pro just switched from a, a one-time payment to a, a subscription model, and one month's subscription is more than they were charging for the whole app before, so I'm done using Filmic Pro. Fuck those guys. There's a really weird scene in this film where, like, uh, Doug Bradley has been let out of of the jail cell he's in, and like, but this girl like has a shotgun pointed at him, and he th he's like, "Ooh, yeah, I'm so scared, you know. And I'm gonna cut your eyes out." And then he like pulls out a knife, and there's a cut to outside, and the girl just runs outside, like bleeding from her eyes, and it's like, "Well, uh, let's just show it, just show it." Oh, and uh, you know what I was saying about. Vision. <laughs> Somebody help me! Like, they had to put a cut there because there's no way he could have done that. He could not have cut her eyes out right there. It is impossible for him to have cut her eyes out there. So, <laughs> it just... Like, of course they had to cut to outside, otherwise there's no way that would have happened. <laughs> yeah, I- okay, this one's silly, this one's over the top. Honestly, I said six was the only one that was dumb, but this one's like a little dumb. But it's dumb in a fun way. Six is dumb in a dumb way. This one's dumb in a fun way. I- I enjoyed Wrong Turn 5. Uh, honestly, like, if they, if they could have pulled it together just a little more, I might even have ranked this higher. Like, if, if they could have, you know, built a coherent story around this one, I might have ranked it even higher. But, I don't know, for what it is, it's one of the more enjoyable installments. <laughs> See, you know... I knew I should have made a left turn at Albuquerque. Yes, here we have the first film in second place. I sure do love to rank the second movie in franchises higher than the first. How many times have I done that now? I definitely Fast and the Furious. Fast and the F Too Fast, Too Furious was ranked, like, way higher than the first one. But I also did it to Paranormal Activity. I also did it to Leprechaun. I also did it to Police Academy. But, like, incl so, like, including this one, that's, like, five of the eight, nine franchises I had, I've had i covered so far. Is it nine? Hold on. Wrong Turn, SNL, Police Academy, Fast and the Furious, Leprechaun, uh, Paranormal Activity, and Ernest. So I guess seven? Five of the seven? I've ranked the second movie higher than the first. Uh, see how long that trend lasts. Anyways, uh, Wrong Turn is one of the better horror movies from the 2000s. Granted, that's a pretty low bar. The horror, I, I am very open about the fact that 2000s horror is one of my least favorite eras of- honestly, the 2000s is probably my least favorite era of horror. The 2000s is honestly probably my least favorite era of film. I think films were significantly worse in the 2000s than they were 
in the decades immediately preceding and succeeding it. But horror in particular suffered during the 2000s, and I, I think it says something that Wrong Turn is one of the better horror movies from that era, because in any other decade it would probably not be. It would be completely forgettable and unnoteworthy. But in the 2000s, it's one of the best horror films they made. In this movie, in this movie, like, some kids and dogs, like, of course, they take a wrong turn, ooh. They, they end up in the woods, and they start getting killed off and by these, like, cannibals. So they start running. They, they're running through the woods trying to, like, find civilization, and just one by one they're getting picked off, and that's a good setup, I think. Like, it, it means deaths can happen consistently, and, and the threat is, like, pretty well established right from the beginning, so really it's all down to execution from that point, and I think they execute it decently. Not the best, obviously. I'm, I'm not saying you should, like, oh, you gotta go out and see Wrong Turn now. Uh, it's, it's a pretty mediocre horror movie, but, I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's got its moments. It's, it's... Not the idiot. It is far from the worst movie I've ever seen. Pretty consistently throughout this franchise, at least in the early parts of the franchise, there would be, like, like every, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes in this franchise, there'd be a kill where you're like, oh, oh, they were really trying with that effect, but it just does not work. Any, any, like, there's plenty of practical effects in this franchise. There are plenty of practical kills, but any time it's a CG kill, it's like, Aw, oh, you really wanted that to be something, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Th there is, like, one really cool kill in this. Like, there's a, like, a POV shot from, like, it's, it's like point of view from an axe going into a guy's head and they like that's such a cool shot why don't more horror have why haven't more horror movies done that of like pov from the weapon going into someone's head <laughs> uh that's, that's a good one that's very creative more 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 pov weapon pov kills please um yeah uh, i I had fun with Wrong Turn. I enjoyed Wrong Turn, but it's nothing exceptional, you know. It's it, it's a horror movie that is very reliant on the stuff that has come before it. Uh and I I mean this and the sequel wear their influences way out on their sleeves. The second one even more so. The second one is like very openly like Hey, remember Deliverance? Remember Texas Chainsaw? We're, we're doing Deliverance! We're doing Texas Chainsaw! <laughs> and yet the second movie is still a lot more fun than this one, so... Let's talk about the second movie. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. Wrong Turn 2 sees a group of people filming a survival-style survivor style uh, reality TV show. Uh, so that tells you about when this film came out. It came out when Survivor was popular. Um, man, do you guys remember Survivor? What happened to Survivor? That, that was kind of a cool idea for a show, I think. Like, that was everywhere. That was everywhere back in the day. I remember, um, like, fuck my fucking Boy Scout troop had, like, well, one of the guys who, like, won the Survivor was, like, an Eagle Scout, so he was, like, going around to all these different Boy Scout troops and, like, giving motivational speeches. So I, I've met someone who's won on Survivor before. Uh, what a show, huh? I, I, I mean, of, like, the litany, the, the, of, of the complete oversaturation of reality TV shows we got... In the 2000s. Survivor is certainly one that stood out. Um, but this is not my Survivor review. Subscribe. Uh, like and subscribe. And leave comments down below telling me if you want me to review Survivor. 
Um, instead, I'll review Wrong Turn. Uh, I'll be reviewing Wrong Turn too until until I hear back from you guys on whether or not you want me to review Survivor. So they're, they're filming this Survivor style reality TV show, and that kind of <laughs> adds this like interesting layer of like. You don't know what's part of the show and what's the inbred cannibals killing people. Ooh. Okay. And to be fair, they, they are filming, like, a test pilot for the show and not the show itself. So, it, like, it's kind of fair that they don't know there's cannibal inbreds in these woods. But, uh, I mean, that's a fun setup. Patton Oswalt makes, like... One of the strangest cameos of all time in this film. Like, it starts with this actress who's going out to be on the reality TV show. And she's talking to her agent on the phone. And her agent on the phone, who you never see, who has, like, two lines, is Patton Oswalt. And, like, you, you can tell immediately that it's Patton Oswalt. It's just like... Wait, hold up. Is that is that Patton Oswalt? Is Patton Oswalt playing her her agent in this scene? Yeah, yeah, it's him. <laughs> what an odd cameo to have in this movie. Ratatouille, MST3K: The Return, Wrong Turn Two. What a career! Uh, Wrong Turn takes first place here. Because it is the most bonkers, tasteless, off-the-wall, absolutely disgusting, completely indulgent movie of the series. And that's what Wrong Turn's all about. This, don't come here looking for subtlety. Don't come here looking for, like, competent writing. Come here looking for some really sick, really weird shit. You know, <laughs> you know, like, like, take Deliverance, take Texas Chainsaw Massacre, take out everything that makes those films, like, smart, brilliant masterpieces of the genre, and just really cut to the core of, like, the, the gross, disgusting, over-the-top kills, and you've got the Wrong Turn series. And Wrong Turn 2 is the movie that leans into it the absolute hardest. And I, I love and respect it for that. Like, it knows exactly what this franchise is about. And it, it does that to the fullest extent of its ability. Uh, Wrong Turn 2 is directed by Joe Lynch who also directed a film I recommended very recently in my top 11 more metal movies, uh, Mayhem. He directed Mayhem. And Mayhem is like a million times better than Wrong Turn, but it kind of makes sense that both of these movies are, are like in his repertoire. <laughs> like it makes sense that the, the director of Mayhem would also not only have made a wrong turn movie, but made like the most, like, like the sickest, most over the top wrong turn movie. I don't know, man. Like, like, this film is just a ton of fun if you're down for some really sick shit. You, you, you gotta know what you're getting into with the wrong turn franchise, but if you know what you're getting into with the wrong turn franchise, this is absolutely the best that it has to offer. This is far and away the most entertaining of the bunch. And, uh, that's the whole Wrong Turn series. I would say in terms of enjoyment, I would put this franchise above Police Academy. Probably, like, just above Police Academy. What would it be below? Ernest, maybe? I don't know. I feel like Ernest is pretty high on the list, though. Um... Number one is SNL. I didn't say that in the SNL video, but SNL, the SNL movies is absolutely the best franchise I've looked at so far. Partially because it has the most actually good movies, but also because I just love how broad it is. Like, it has some of the worst fucking movies you'll ever see, but also some, like, really good movies, and I really love the the drastic difference in quality there. Wrong Turn, honestly, has, like, a pretty small 
a window of quality there. Like, you're not... It's not going to be better than a certain point, and it's not going to be worse than a certain point. Fast and the Furious, definitely number two. I guess Ernest would be number three. Uh, this is better than Police Academy. It's definitely better than Paranormal Activities. My fucking god, is this better than Paranormal Activity? Paranormal Activity is a mind-numbingly repetitive series. Wrong Turn gets so much credit for doing something different with every movie. Fuck the Paranormal Activities movies. Wrong Turn is where it's at. Leprechaun. Leprechaun I would definitely put above this. Uh, I might, I might put Leprechaun above Ernest, too. Which would put this right below Ernest. Um, it feels weird to put Ernest that low on the list, but... Because I kind of liked the Ernest franchise, but then again... I don't know, I liked Wrong Turn well enough, too. Like, Police Academy was a mixed bag, and Paranormal Activity, I think it's obvious I fucking hated, but... I mean, in terms of franchises, I've enjoyed most of them. <laughs> Uh, so after this, I'm doing a fun little drunk ranking Christmas special. It's only gonna be five movies, which is fewer than I usually do. Usually, my, my, like, my bar is, like, there has to be at least six. I need at least six movies before I'll drunk rank a franchise. But it's a Christmas special. For a Christmas special, yeah, okay. I'll do five. Especially because... It's such a weird little franchise to even exist. Uh, but that, that'll be like a smaller little thing. The next big drunk ranking project is gonna be the Hellraiser movies. Hellraiser is hot right now and it absolutely will not be by the time I get that video out. But you know what? Fuck it. We're watching all the Hellraiser movies. Uh, until then...